So the first tier customer is supposed to be the big distributor, yeah. And this is uh, maybe a uh, agent, yeah, sub distributor, and this is the uh, uh, retailer, yeah. And uh, at the end, we uh, come to the final. So if we see before the organization, before the manufacturer, we call upstream activity, and after we call downstream activity, yeah. Uh, this is uh, a supply chain activity around manufacturer more 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 complex, yeah. Okay, yeah, material supply, component marker, and etc. Okay. Now, uh, this is supply chain. I uh, explained before. Right now, we come to logistic. Yeah. The logistic function responsible for the flow of material from the supplier into an organization through operation within the organization and then out to the customer you know that logistics is not only concerned with one institution it is uh, logistics is uh, close to every single point of organization which is in the uh, supply chain system the role of logistics is moving material into the organization from supplier is called inbound and inward logistic moving material out to the customer or it is outbound logistic yeah uh, it is mean outward logistic moving material within the organization is material management so there is the role of logistic yeah before come to the company it is called uh, become to manufacture it is from inbound logistic in the company in the manufacturing we call material management because in the manufacture sometimes we have a very wide uh, manufacturer wide plan sometimes an organization have several plan yeah from plan one to plan two plan t it is need moving it is also responsible of logistic yeah from one to another plan in the organization after come to finish product and we start to move to the customer we call it outbound logistic outbound logistic from manufacturer to distributor sub distributor stockist and whatever come to the uh, external uh, to the end of customer so we can see here if we see inbound logistic is in here yeah in the organization in the manufacturing we call material management yeah from one uh, places to another and it is also uh, responsible of uh, logistic yeah and outbound logistic yeah so all uh, of this is the role of logistic yeah about moving the material yeah from supplier to the uh, end customer uh, what is uh, logistic do? Yeah, it is procurement, inward transport traffic, receiving, warehousing, stock, yeah, order picking, outward transport, material handling, vehicle distribution management, recycling. Yeah, sometimes we have reject product, then we must uh, send it back to the manufacturer. Yeah, we we call it return. Yeah, location and communication. But uh, in the simple you. Uh, can see here what is the main uh, the main uh, concept yeah in the logistic it is uh, inventory transportation and warehousing so what is uh, we must learn yeah in the logistic area is inventory management transportation management and warehouse we need to do it right time and the right uh, cost there yeah? and the right specification of product uh, we cannot uh, make a mistake yeah, for uh, for sending a product it is a fatal yeah fatal mistake if we send uh, something uh, something different yeah from what the customer order so we must uh, carefully yeah carefully to uh, to control yeah the warehouse yeah system yeah but uh, it is not very difficult right now because we right now have a digital or modern warehouse which is can 
identify what product, what specification, what specification, and where to open. Yeah. Now uh, you understand the concept of a logistic and uh, supply chain. Logistic and supply chain. Okay, and what is the connectivity and logistic and supply chain? We cannot separate yeah, supply chain management and logistic. Yeah. Even though right now is the challenge is very high yeah, because uh, we have a spread location of uh, uh, customer, yeah, especially whenever the company send the product you know, to the world, yeah, like we have in Indonesia, Indofood, yeah, Indofood company, uh, sell their product to every single country in the world, yeah, in Australia, in Africa, in Malaysia, you, you also know Indomie also, yeah in China and Europe and even in Middle East, yeah. So uh, how how can uh, the the noodle, yeah, instant noodle come there, yeah? But the taste is different, yeah, uh, from uh, country to country. Yeah? So it is uh, not very easy, yeah. That's why the uh, we must concern with the strategy yeah strategy yeah uh, today i focus uh, the discussion in the strategy perspective yeah because actually doing uh, material logistic and supply chain is uh, white material yeah so i focus in strategy yeah how a logistic strategy fit into organization's broader decision then because uh, uh, we must uh, know where our uh, where our business yeah what business yeah and what is the market requirement and we as a company also have mission vision and also objective yeah we must support uh, the vision, mission, and objective of a company, yeah. And sometimes, as a corporate company, have more than one business, yeah. It is called multiple SBU firm, yeah. The corporate sometimes more than one business, one business, two business, three, yeah. Like in, uh, like in Indo Food, yeah. They have many, yeah. I know in Indonesia and. Also, maybe Petronas, even though they, their major major product is uh, gasoline as a BBM, yeah, we call it. Yeah. But of course, they also have another business. They also call a corporate with multiple SPU firm. As you know, every single business has their own strategy, and we must fulfill what. Uh, the company need yeah in uh, in the supply chain and logistic yeah so logistic and supply chain must uh, fit yeah what the company and business uh, strategy yeah and uh, logistic strategy then defined by uh, a set of guiding principles driving forces and ingrained attitude that have the coordinate goal plan and policies and which are re reinforced through conscious and subconscious behavior within the bit with within and between partner across networks. Yeah, it is not very easy, you know, because every organization that uh, have their culture, their policy, yeah, so logistic strategy must meet, yeah, must meet their uh, requirement. So the question is, how do organization, organization make this decision? Why should the company base its logistic strategy on flexible rather than cost? Why does one company choose to specialize while a similar one chooses to diversify? It does mean that what will be our decision? 
is that we focus on flexibility or cost. Yeah. Uh, before uh, we continue our discussion, yeah, in the company, especially in the operation, have their own uh, competitive advantage. Yeah. Sometimes they will compete with cost, compete with quality, compete with flexibility. Nah, when we focus on flexibility and when we will focus on cost, on and why the company choose uh, to specialize and focus yeah it is uh, supposed to be concerned with what the business have uh, strategy yeah so the business strategy is very important for supply chain and logistic function to follow because why because business strategy is the, the major consideration of the logistic strategy. We are uh, as a function, we must support yeah, uh, business uh, strategy. And logistic manager must also uh, have a discussion with the higher, yeah, higher manager of the business strategy because logistic is a coverage uh, in the corporation yeah not only one business yeah they also servicing um, more than one business even more than one company yes it's so complicated in logistic yeah the logistic strategy of an organization consists of all the strategic decision policy plan and culture relating to management of the supply chain yeah uh, the culture is different, yeah. Culture in Indonesia is different with Malaysia, with China, with Hong Kong, yeah, and another country. So, uh, and also the custom and also the tax, yeah, in the global logistics, uh, it is so complicated, yeah. So we must consider all of this. That's why logistic manager is uh, must also have a discussion and agreement with other senior manager. Now, uh, the designing logistic strategy, starting point for designing and logistic strategy, examine the higher strategy. Yeah? Uh, I hope you know about what I mean. So the business, uh, the business strategy is the uh, top priority to support. Yeah, it is the most, uh, uh, the major con uh, consideration of uh, logistic strategy. So, okay. What does it mean the higher strategy? Yeah. Higher strategy is set organization goal and the uh, and the context for all logistic decision. This is a higher strategy. Yeah. Uh, logistic strategy must consider with higher strategy. It is mean the business strategy and corporate strategy. And logistic strategy must be also concerned with the product employee resources facility yeah, vehicle, yeah, and other internal strength yeah, including information system actually yeah. and uh, they must also close yeah discussion to the marketing yeah marketing yeah. it is mean they must know deeply about the customer market condition technology economic climate and other external factors yeah the internal factor it is uh, supposed to be control yeah but the external is uncontrolled factor yes yeah? so we must have a high flexibility yeah to cope with the environment yeah? business environment so this is the organization distinctive competence and this is the business environment yeah? we must know exactly what our capability and also we must know exactly what happening in the business environment i mean the dynamic competition of the product or service we have here yeah. so a higher strategy business environment and all competing organization is uh, must be known as a logistic manager to formulate the strategy so the logistic strategy uh, focus is on cost, service, customer service, timing, quality, product flexibility, volume flexibility, technology, and location. Why? 
because the the behavior of of customer all over the world right now they need to fulfill the product and the uh, low prices and also the map specification customized yeah and also at a right time so right quality right time right specification and custom yeah so uh, the challenge another challenge we must have a product flexibility what is product flexibility yeah product flex flexibility mean that we can uh, adapt yeah adapted flexibility yeah? we can adapt it fast whenever there is a change in the customer needs it is uh, about the specification volume flexibility mean that uh, customer can uh, de uh, can demand in the very low uh, volume and very high and we can uh, provide both yeah even though the customer need in the low volume and large volume we we can fulfill it is called volume flexibility and also of course the technology it is make uh, the communication very easy to the every single member of uh, supply chain yeah and the location we must know about the location uh, characteristic yeah because uh, every location have their own specification yeah. so this is the focus of logistic strategy yeah to uh, to see how can we fulfill the company uh, the customer need we must know exactly what our capacity now if we already have uh, our capability we know so we will fulfill uh, the upper level strategy the upper level strategy call a business level strategy this is a formula from uh, michael porter i think it is very popular for for, for you yeah i think you already have this uh course yeah in the strategy management maybe or maybe in the uh uh introduction of business yeah this is very popular yeah every student in business must know about it yeah it is uh already formulated in 1980 yeah and uh it still can use right now yeah? let me see yeah uh porter Michael Porter from Harvard, yeah, they uh, divide the strategy business into three, yeah, differentiation, overall cost leadership, and focus. Yeah. Organization or business must have a competitive advantage. They can use overall cost leadership as quantitative competitive advantage. It does mean that our organization will provide the will offer the price lower to every single uh, other organization yeah with our company with our competitor but differentiation is not about the cost it is about quality and specification and customization uh, this price is usually high yeah? uh, they will compete with this differentiation yeah, I will give you an example about the two of them here. Yeah. And focus it about the uh, focusing in the market. Yeah, sometimes uh, organization focus on uh, teenager. Yeah, focus on uh, young young mother. Yeah, or maybe yeah, you can choose. Yeah, focus in market. Yeah, so they provide the uh, they choose the particular segment only. Yeah, this is a uh, three of a generic strategy uh, formulated by uh, Michael Porter. This is yeah overall cost leadership, differentiation, and focus strategy. Yeah. Overall cost leadership mean that they will sell with the low cost position relative to another another firm yeah firm peers yeah, and manage relationship throughout the entire value chain. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, this is called 
overall cost leadership. Differentiation, it is not low price, yeah, like I uh, explained before, yeah. Differentiation means that they create products and or services that are unique and value, yeah. Not non-price attribute for which customer will pay a premium. So uh, this is uh, a customer uh, will pay in a premium price to get the uh, very unique product. So uh, if the company use this competitive advantage differentiation, I mean, so they must have this capacity and they must uh, target the very special segment. Yeah. And focus strategy, it is narrow, yeah, narrow product line, buyer segment, or targeting geographic market, yeah. Uh, maybe you just in geographic, yeah, you you only uh, sell your product in Sumatra or maybe in Malaysia only, yeah. So it is a uh, target in geographic or maybe buyer segment, yeah, buyer segment like in the uh, uh, this is for old people, young people, or, uh, yeah, baby, yeah, this focus, yeah. So, a focus strategy attain the advantage and either through differentiation or cost, yeah. Uh, the important thing in the focus strategy is what market you will target focusly, yeah. So, it is a three. Uh, we will discuss in the deep yeah, thing. Yeah. Overall cost leadership uh, have a tactic. Yeah. Leadership is strategy. So integrated tactic is aggressive construction, efficient scale facility. So whenever it is concerned with the logistic, so the, the most consideration is cost. So we will decide everything. Uh, it is... Uh, Consider the price, yeah. The, the very efficient thing will be choose by us, yeah. Figures pursuit of cost reduction from experience. So they must uh, learn, yeah, experience how to make a process efficient and efficient, yeah. So from experience, maybe they will uh, study how to make, uh, to reduce cost, yeah, to make more efficient. Tight cost and overhead control, yeah. Overhead, it is uh, it's supposed to be done, yeah, because if they do this, it is mean that they will raise their profit margin, yeah. If we can uh, produce in the minimum cost, uh, it will be a benefit for us because with the same price, we have minimum cost, so the margin, profit margin, it will be raised. Yeah. Ah, you very uh, familiar, yeah, especially for us, yeah, Indonesian young people in Malaysia is uh, known, yeah, the giant supermarket and Air Asia, yeah, the both product is come from Malaysia, right, yeah. Now, a giant is a uh, competitive advantage is low price. So we you you can see here the tagline is your low price leader, yeah, and also <clears throat> R Asia, ah, uh, so uh, the R Asia no everyone can fly. <laughs> okay, thank you, Pak Tanto. Yeah, ah, uh, this is a value chain. How to fulfill the, the strategy with uh value chain? Yeah, if we have uh. Cost leadership, so lean, lean strategy is very important then, yeah. So lean strategy is reducing the waste then uh, also reducing price, yeah. Lean strategy, okay. All right now we come to differentiation, yeah. It is the opposite of uh, low price, yeah. It is specific quality and high price. Like uh, the example here is a uh, photocopy, it's like copy Ciroc, yeah. And uh, the airline is not is not offering low price, but uh, differentiation. So the tagline here, you can see a great way to fly, yeah. It is uh, different yeah, with uh, Air Asia. This is a uh, concern with their business uh, strategy, yeah. And uh, somebody also uh, concerned with the 
speed ya yeah, speed of delivery like pizza hard delivery express delivery uh, delivery on promise it is uh, that, uh, advantage nya is uh, speed of delivery and Samsung is flexibility because the frequency of a Samsung product the generation and type is frequent ya yeah, compared to able for example ya yeah. every single strategy will be support with the different uh, what call value chain ya yeah. this is a value chain ya yeah. the inbound and outbound thing here is a uh, very different ya yeah, from low cost and differentiation ya yeah. so it is concerned with margin ya yeah. okay what we will do right now is not only uh, we have one because the uh, the situation is agile right now yeah buka yeah so the uh, we need a uh, agile strategy yeah there are two aspects and agility first is the speed of reaction second is the ability to tailor logistics it is not very easy yeah so we speed and also uh, price yeah, low price it's not very easy yeah so uh, we need we call it lean logistic and agile logistic yeah lean, uh, lean is concerned with efficient but agile logistic is uh, flexibility yeah you can see here the objective method concern and etc okay thank you yeah <laughs> thank you but don't worry i i maybe uh, uh more no problem with it Okay. okay, I invite everyone to for the discussion. Or yeah. maybe I will start the discussion first. Uh, may I ask a question? Uh, we need... You can write also in the chat room, yeah, if you uh, mm -hmm. have a question, yeah, not only in. Uh... Okay, we need... uh, I have some impression maybe to clarify uh, since not all students are from uh, logistic or supply chain uh, background. So how it's possible to implement some strategies to, let's say, service a uh, company, uh, Gwindin? Yeah, yeah. Uh, may I, oh, may I close first with this so I can close the presentation? Yeah. Okay, logistic is not only concerned with manufacture. Thank you, Pak Tanto, yeah, your question, yeah. I have also a research in logistic in uh, uh, beauty care, eh? beauty care, eh? beauty center, yeah. As okay. we know, also even the beauty care have uh, their own uh, strategy. Yeah? There is low cost also, and uh, they also sometimes uh, flexible and quality, yeah. If maybe a hospital also, but hospital is general, yeah. But if we see hotel and our hotel, yeah, maybe it's similar for all of us, yeah. We we can see the many kind of hotel, yeah. Hotel five star, hotel four star, three star, and uh, just uh, Airbnb, yeah, or uh, the lower price, yeah. Hub, yeah. City hub hotel. They a uh, city hub hotel, of course, they practice thing low cost. Even in a hotel also need uh, many kind, yeah, uh, food, yeah, and also uh, another service, yeah, food, uh, not only food, yeah, actually, yeah, cleaning something and everything, and uh, electricity, and it is concerned with the uh, overhead cost, yeah. So they must have uh, also a uh, uh, employee, yeah. They must have the multi talent uh, employee because for lower cost hotel it is very uh, very costly whenever they have more employee so the employee must be a multi talent yeah and the food yeah as you see in the very low price uh, hotel maybe yeah and here we only have yeah in in breakfast nasi goreng and uh, yeah me and also and cannot have variety of uh, food and breakfast, yeah. And also the facility. It is uh, must be different with uh, the five star hotel, yeah, part on the way. Yeah. So the the uh, what we call it, yeah, the logistic is different. 
yeah, the logistic is different, yeah. And the hospital, they must be also connected with pharmacies, yeah. Also with uh, uh, alat kesehatan, yeah. What we call it, uh, a bed, yeah. We we can uh, collaborate, yeah. If we concern with cost, we can collaborate even with uh, not only the uh, facility of uh, healthy uh, alat kesehatan. What do you call it? Yeah. Uh, this is very very high price. Yeah. Whenever we must invest. Yeah. For example, I uh, lower price uh, healthcare. Yeah. A clinic. I must collaborate with Airlangga Hospital with Doctor Sutomo Hospital. Yeah. To lower price, yeah, because uh, it is no need for us to invest in many things. Yeah, it will be costly for us. But the service is not as high as the as the very high price houses like that. But then the way, yeah. even in transportation also, yeah, the transportation and the facility is different, yeah, one uh, to another, yeah, because of the. Okay. Yeah. So it is possible for any kind of. Uh, yeah, strategy. yeah, about, yeah, about strategy. Yeah, even uh, okay, we uh, have a question to end it for um, Nora Mariska. Can you illustrate yeah. what situation make a company decide to choose from each general strategy, overall cost leadership or differentiation or profit strategy, and is there any impact on the supply chain if more than one strategy is applied? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can, I can read, yeah. Uh, from Nur Rahma, ya, can you illustrate what situation make company decide to choose from its generic strategy? Focus. Ah, the most consideration is what is our target market, Nur Rahma. You have a very beautiful uh, question, ya. The most important thing, who is our target? And we must know right now, ya, in this time, in the current, ya, we must know your customer deeply in the previous time we not, not, not need no need for us to know deeply of the customer but right now you must know deeply what is your customer requirement yeah? even how uh, how the the way he or she like to pay in credit or cash or apa yeah so uh, it is not very difficult because right now the technology is uh, available. Yeah, like we, like us. Yeah, once we buy from uh, Tokopedia or Shopee or maybe what is popular in in Malaysia. Yeah, uh, once we buy something, yeah, my our database is already took by the company, right, Rahmaya. Yeah. yeah, they know. Oh, Bu Indri like to pay letter. Oh, Pak Tantomi, Pak Antowi like to pay by transfer. Oh, Rahma like to pay by uh, e-money, yeah? For Sophie Pay or Who Pay, like that. And what is your need is known right now, yeah? The, the technology right now even know what product you need, yeah? For example, yeah, if we... Uh, just one by uh, by one product, yeah, maybe shoes, yeah. So every time you open your source mat, you will add by many kind of shoes, yeah. Not not many kind, but specifically what you trying to search. Yeah? Maybe you uh trying to find the shoes sneaker, yeah, sneaker, yeah, one, yeah. uh. Every time you open TikTok, maybe TikTok shopper will. Uh, how do you know? How they know it? Right now, I I, I confuse. How they know my my requirement? Yeah, it is uh, technology. Yeah, maybe you as a young people we can can explain me. Right now, I confuse. Why? If I need a computer, yeah, I try I search computer. Oh, every time I open my source map, many kind of uh, product computer come to me. Right. Yeah, so knowing the customer deeply right now is not very difficult, yeah. But it is in technology. But don't ask me how <laughs> because I don't know how. I I surprised right now. Oh, we very even an email, even on everything you open Google, yeah. Uh, in our computer, yeah, they know know our know my need, yeah, deeply, yeah. Itu rahma, yeah. So what is the 
target. If you already know yeah, what is your target market. Oh, my target market is people who want to find the very low price. It is mean you must have your competitive advantage in low cost. If you come to low cost strategy, you can open my uh, previous PowerPoint in value chain. May I open it? Pak Tantowi, I have time yes, to open school. it. Yes, okay. still. You have four minutes left. <laughs> Pak Tantowi uh, must continue with time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> it is, uh, this is content. Yeah. If we decide to make a cost leadership or a differentiation, yeah, it's another product, yeah. cost leadership, cost leadership, excuse me. Yeah, in here, inbound and outbound is different, yeah, you can compare, yeah, after the class, yeah. From uh, FV, a competitive because our customer, our target market is low cost price. So in inbound logistics, you must find the supplier effective layout and receiving dock operation. What does it mean? It is about we must find the supplier which is can uh, bring the supply product to us in very, very low price. So uh, this is not customers. So when we buy something from supplier it must be in a huge number if we buy in a huge number it does mean that unit cost is very low so it is not uh, sometimes it, it is not concerned with the specificness so we just only have uh, several type of uh, supply product but we will bought in very periodic time and a very low price. Yeah. And effective use of quality control inspection to minimize the work. So everything is also minimized. Yeah. How we have a quality control. So you, you do RFID or you do in an, uh, with the uh, uh, technology uh, to uh, control and very fast whenever very fast whenever you have uh, trouble yeah? if you have a uh, defect product yeah so it is also very easy right now because the technology can yeah? for example if you uh, as a manufacturer of oh, what is it? yeah a fish can a yeah, fish can so you buy a fish from a uh, nelayan yeah from a nelayan yeah, fisherman yeah so you buy in a very high number of fish, right? Yeah. Because because why? Because uh, you must be efficient in price for the fish. Yeah. But you must uh, uh, you must monitor, yeah. Whenever the fish coming to the uh, the company, it's not very easy to control one by one fish. It's not very easy, yeah. But uh, in a huge uh, number of product you can very fast uh, monitor yeah in lab uh, usually if a high if a big company have a lab laboratorium for uh, this uh, kind of activity yeah for purchasing yeah uh, uh, division yeah after you uh, from here effective utilization of delivery fleet it is also the vehicle yeah vehicle you uh you use you must be sent in the full truck yeah full truck you know uh rahma yeah and your full truck whenever you send something the vehicle is supposed to be full if, if on the a half it is uh waste yeah because the transportation cost is will be higher whenever the truck is not full so the period must be scheduled very carefully. It is, uh, it is will reduce the unit cost. Yeah. And marketing also. Uh, purchasing a media in a, in, in a large block. Yeah. 
So every uh, sometime every area, every region will be promoting uh, have a activity communication marketing in the very different yeah one place and another. But if you uh, have a uh, lot uh, cost cost leadership as uh, your competitive advantage, it cannot like that. Every single places will have the same program of marketing. So you uh, you can see in uh, a product low cost do like uh, Coca Cola, like uh, Pepsi bottle or so. Yeah, they have the same pattern. In uh, it is called mass. Yeah, mass marketing communication. Yeah, it is lower price. It is different with another product. Whenever it is uh, a high price, yeah, they you do not use that kind of thing. Yeah, you cannot see the jewelry done like this. No, not much marketing communication. It's supposed to be one on one marketing. Yeah, so it is different. So every single step in here in bond bond logistics, it is supposed to be low price. So low. So low cost is the most consideration in deciding every single activity in inbound outbound logistics. It's uh, the Rahma. So the opposite is in differentiation. Okay, thank you for your uh, question, Rahma. Is that okay, still fine? Well, <laughs> uh, I'm afraid we have uh, no more time, Quinlan. Okay. Uh, okay. So thank you so much. Uh, we did for your delivery. Uh, I hope it will be it will be very beneficial for our students. Uh, before that, maybe we can have a session for a photo. We did, and okay. the rest of the students. Can Please you open. turn on your camera, everyone? Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. After my marks. Okay, Siti Anur Alia. Thank you. Everyone ready? Linda, ready? Okay, for the first slide, three, two, one. Okay, the next slide, three, two, one. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Winnie. Thank you so much. Thank you for you. Good weekend. Okay, see you again. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for your attention. Terima kasih, Benin. Okay, uh, moving on to the next session. That will be our last session for today's agenda. We will have uh, Associate Professor uh, Muhammad Sabri Sahruddin, who received his PhD from University of Malaysia, Pahang, and MBA in International Business from University of Science, Malaysia. He is currently a senior lecturer at the School of Management at University of Science, Malaysia, and also the coordinator for Operation Management, Business Analytics, and Marketing Clusters. He also holds a membership in Association for Supply Chain Management from the USA. And in addition, he also actively review for general of clear, clear production, environmental engineering and management journal, and international journal of SM business and information management. Okay, uh, Dr. Muhammad Sabir. Hi. Uh, how are you? Good. Okay, very good, Professor. Thank you for uh, joining our program and supporting us. Yes, thank you for the invitation. Uh, and before that, uh, I'm not an associate professor, but thanks for okay. the doa. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I think you mistaken me, uh, associate professor, Dr. Teh. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, apologize, like so. professor. Uh, okay, the session is your professor. Thank All right, you. thank you so much. Right, everyone, I think this is the last session, right? So uh, hang on. I know you all are tired since morning. Uh, you have a very long talk since morning, but um, uh, this is going to be the last one. So don't worry much. And since our moderator, uh, let me check, uh, swap or duplicate. I think I go with duplicate. All right, so since our moderator was very smart today, so I also have to wear blazer today. Right, so um, uh, for this topic, yeah, before we start, um, if you have any question, feel free to ask, yeah, you can unmute uh, anytime you want, you can stop me, or 
uh, at the end, uh, we're going to have a Q&A session, yeah? All right, so my topic is about disruption and supply chain resilience, yeah? And I would like for you to think that this topic is related to a previous uh, talk by Ibu Indriana, Indriana Wati, yeah? Uh, regarding uh, the environmental supply chain, yeah? Okay. Uh, all right. So what we're going to cover today, yeah, in regards to the disruption, supply chain resilience, is that we need to break down yeah, the disruption. Yeah, we need to understand disruption, supply chain, and what is resilience. Yeah. So that is what we're going to cover. And then I'm going to share with you how you can uh, actually um, um, uh, implement that. Yeah, in a case study, yeah, how you can analyze case study and how resilient can actually help uh, ourselves yeah, as a human being, right? Right, so what is disruption? Yeah? Disruption, um, as the definition uh, stated there, is a disturbance yeah, or a problem which interrupts an event. Um, you've been doing all um, normal things and then suddenly something happened that interrupts you. Okay, and in terms of business, it defines as a radical and lasting changes the way all firms in that industry operate. Yeah, for example, I believe that maybe some of you are, are football fans here. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, uh, some of you are football fans, or even if you are not a football fans, I believe that you know about Chelsea Football Club, and they recently sacked their uh, manager, yeah, uh, Thomas Tuchel, and they, um, because uh, Thomas Tuchel uh, lose the uh, the players' trust, yeah. So you have to imagine this: if you are in Chelsea, yeah, and you are the manager or or, uh, or the owner of Chelsea Football Club, and all eleven players in that team playing currently are bought by Thomas Tuchel, right? And he lost the trust of the players and he got sacked. So if you are the manager, what is your plan? Whether you want to find um, uh, a manager that willing to take all these 11 players or you might think that the manager, the new manager might come and say that I don't want this 11, I want my own 11 players. That's going to cost a lot of money. Yeah. And that is going to disrupt uh, Chelsea Football Club, yeah, their ambition to win Champions League and so on. Okay, so disruption it can be advantageous or it can be disadvantageous. We will see why uh, we say that it can be advantageous or disadvantageous. Yeah, right. So why we need to know about disruption? Yeah. Why not we just go straight away to resilient? Why not we just learn supply chain? We first need to understand about disruption because disruption, it uh, can impact business. Yeah? Business change all, all, all the time. Yeah? Um, some of you are very young or too young to know about BlackBerry perhaps. Yeah? Uh, during uh, back in my time, BlackBerry was really, really famous. Yeah? And BlackBerry, if in Asia, BlackBerry only target Indonesia yeah? because the biggest market in Asia for BlackBerry is Indonesia. Yeah? So BlackBerry failed. BlackBerry stopped working. You, you can buy BlackBerry, but for antique collection only. Yeah? You cannot use that. Yeah? Uh, even if you use it, you cannot use uh, install anything. Yeah? So BlackBerry failed to change. Yeah? Now they are no longer in mobile industry, smartphone, yeah, because they failed to change, yeah. And disruption actually brings new opportunity, yeah. Um, uh, now you are uh, torn between you, you want to choose which one iOS, you want to use Android OS, or maybe you prefer the Microsoft, although I don't think Microsoft is famous, yeah. Uh, so you, you might, uh, you now have a lot of options compared to those time yeah and if you find in uh, if you go to youtube and you find blackberry making fun of apple yeah 
the then uh, Steve Ballmer, I think, yeah, the CEO of BlackBerry, making fun of iPhone, the first introduction of iPhone. Yeah? Uh, he said that who wants to buy that uh, expensive phone? Then there is no stylus. Uh, there is no keyboard. Who's going to buy that? Now you see yeah, what happened to uh, Apple. Now you see what happened to BlackBerry if we fail to take the new opportunity. Okay, and the reason why it is important for us to always analyze, always assess disruption is because of risk and time it takes to recover. Okay, so knowing business will get hit by disruption, we cannot, sometimes we cannot uh, evade that. Like, for example, COVID-19, yeah? you, you done all your best, but suddenly COVID-19 is out of your control. Yeah, uh, And uh, it, uh, the disruption will help businesses to identify the impact of the risk and to adapt from that. Yeah, So BlackBerry did not see that touch screen will be their downfall. They say that, oh no, touch screen. No one wants to use touch screen. Nokia has a, 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 a touch, a touchpad, a, not a keyboard. And then we have the keyboard and all businesses want to use uh, keyboard yeah and now because they fail to adapt uh, they then try to change yeah now they have the, the keyboard plus touch screen but still it is too late yeah so we have seen the bad thing of disruption and why it is important for businesses to always uh, uh, adapt yeah and take the new opportunity right so how are we going to do that? Yeah. So first, in order for us to do that, we need to analyze disruption. Yeah. We need to know about disruption. Okay. So how are we going to analyze that? Yeah. So in order for us to understand disruption, we need to know that disruption sometimes is controlled and uncontrollable. Yeah. So it comes from external and internal. So for external, like environmental we can use pastel yeah uh, i believe that um, some of you already know about this yeah like uh, political economic social uh, technology environment and legal yeah uh, you can google about this yeah uh, that is for environmental scanning yeah we need to know about the environment uh, what it will impact when i say environment it's not about uh, green uh, it's not about sustainability itself yeah uh, we are talking about the social, uh, we are talking about technology, terrorism, cyber threat, and so on, right? And then we can, we also need to look at the industry, yeah? Michael Porter, yeah, introduced this uh, Porter Five Forces, yeah? And then we have SWOT analysis for internal, yeah? What we are um, uh, interested in is the opportunity and threat, yeah? S uh, strength and weaknesses, we already know. Is part of our company, but opportunity, if we fail to grab it, then we might become like BlackBerry, yeah? Trap, if we fail to reduce it, we might become like Thomas Tuchel, yeah? And then we have this value chain analysis that you've seen uh, just now, yeah? By Ibu Indranawati, yeah? Uh, the value chain analysis, we look at the whole supply, uh, sorry, uh, firm process, yeah? Uh, we might not mistaken this with uh, the whole supply chain. Yeah, uh, it's different value chain and supply chain. Yeah, uh, supply chain uh, it will be more in depth. Yeah, uh, but uh, we can use value chain for the supply chain as well, and then we can also use external consultant, someone outside of our company. Yeah, who has different view. Yeah, might see something different. Yeah, uh, it's like. When you have your own house, you think that it, that is the most beautiful house. Then you invite your friend, and your friend say that, that this is wrong. Uh, there's uh, some dirt over there. Yeah. So sometimes external can help our company to grow. Yeah. When we use these tools, when we analyze, we can actually prepare two things: disaster management plan and business continuity plan. Yeah. So we can do this disaster management plan first and then do business continuity plan or do concurrently, yeah? But uh, the, my advice is for us to follow 
uh, starting with disaster management plan because we want to look at what type of disaster will impact our company. For example, we talk about earthquake, we talk about uh, tsunami, we talk about flood, we talk about climate change, we talk about COVID-19 or other new pandemic, we talk about cyber threat. Yeah? So those are a disaster to our company. So what we want to know? We want to know how it will impact our company or firm. Yeah? Uh, what is the highest priority? Yeah? For example, oh, I think my company, uh, the, the, the most uh, vulnerable to uh, earthquake, for example. Okay? And then what is the responsible for each person yeah, in our company when risks occur? Yeah, we actually did not assign, right? Even in Malaysia, we are not assigning to, uh, in case this happened, uh, this disaster happened, what should we do? Who's going to be responsible to do all this? Yeah, we all leave this, uh, just take a call and then call the IT, just call the security, right? We don't know what to do. We ask them to do, to do for us. Yeah, so we need to have a responsible person, we need to develop this. Yeah? Who's going to take this responsibility when a disruption happens? Otherwise, we, it is going to be too late. Yeah? All right. So once we analyze and once we know the responsi uh, there's responsibilities of each person, then we can do the business continuity plan. All right. So with this risk, what we can do, what strategy we can take yeah? if happen any risk or disaster we are going to do this yeah we're going to prepare this let me share with you uh, one of the university who um every year will have a um a natural disaster of a uh, flash flood yeah a very huge flood uh, in uh, malaysia yeah so they know that every uh, November, December, it's going to be a uh, flood. It's going to be a uh, high risk yeah, of getting flood yeah, uh, or uh, heavy rain. Yeah? So what they do, two months before, they will start to get, uh, uh, to tell the students, uh, you don't need to come to university unless you have work to do for undergraduate. Uh, you can actually plan, yeah? We will see uh, accordingly. If not, uh, your parents can take you, yeah? And then they have this volunteer club yeah? that will prepare uh, to hire uh, or, or to find volunteers yeah? to help during the disaster itself. And one month before, they will start to collect money. They start to have, uh, uh, to plan the logistic. Who's going to man the boat? Yeah, who's going to call for the fire department and so on. Yeah? So they prepare because every year they face the same disaster. It's out of their control. So that is business continuity plan. Yeah? How they can reduce the risk. Okay? So that is your part when you are handling with disruption. Right? And you need to think about uh, the short-term plan the medium or long-term plan. Eh? How are you going to solve this problem? Right, so enough saying that. So we still have some time, I believe. So I would like for you to uh, uh, go uh, scan this QR code, yeah? And then uh, try to answer this question. What kind of disruption you see today that will impact businesses, yeah? And then I will screenshot and I will put your uh, overall answer uh, in this slide. Yeah, and if the moderator allows, yeah, I will share with you this slide later, right? So please scan this QR code and see if you uh, uh, if you can answer as many times you want. Yeah, what kind of disruption you see nowadays? Yeah, right. So let me go back to this slide. Right. Okay. So let me refresh this. Hopefully you can go in. If you can't, please let me know. Yeah. Because this is good uh, for you when uh, you want to analyze for the case later on. Yeah. Anyone uh, having trouble to uh, 
to use this QR code. Uh, if if you have problem, you can also use this code. Yeah. Okay, you can type in your Google. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I have one participant who already helped. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, you can go to this website, slido.com, and enter this number 34019391. Yeah. And then uh, later on, I will um, provide uh, the screenshot. Yeah. Let's take only five minutes to do this, yeah. So uh, I hope the rest will also help, yeah, to uh, because this is good for you when you want to analyze for the case later on, yeah. Right. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. I oh okay, interesting, um, interesting uh, answer. Yeah? Okay, let's take uh, uh, two more minutes. Yeah. All right, so let me print screen this, yeah. Okay, so let me print screen this and share with you. All right, so I hope you can see the, the slide, yeah? Um, should have, oh, it's not full, yeah? Uh, oh, it's okay. Right, so what we have, um, allow me to read a little bit, yeah? Because uh, the screenshot is not full, yeah? So we have pandemic as the most, yeah? Technology, war, yeah, it's good, yeah? It's good that uh, you all know about uh, this thing, yeah? Okay, so let me just show you here, yeah? right here. Yeah? So let me, uh, so I think this one is much easier to see. So let me screenshot this and, right, okay. Set this as number two and close. Close this, delete this. All right, so this is the result, yeah? 
Okay. So we can see that pandemic, technology, war, uh, big data, yeah? uh, world new, world new media, eh? or world new new media, eh? new market. Okay. OPR, yeah, finance, yeah, we have pandemic, and most of you uh, uh, chose technology, uh, pandemic, and also war. Uh, that's a good thing. Yeah? Um, and it's interesting that you find natural disaster is uh, not as too uh, dominant here. Yeah? So it's quite interesting to see. Yeah? Right, so that is correct. Yeah? Uh, you need to do this. Uh, I mean, you need to prepare a disaster plan. And for you to do disaster plan, you need to discuss like this one. Yeah. You, uh, this is what we call as the uh, the wisdom of the crowd. Yeah. Wisdom of the crowd. Okay. You can look up, uh, look it up yeah, in Google about that. Yeah. All right. So now you know about disruption. Let's link that to supply chain right okay so what is supply chain supply chain in definition is a process or activity of transforming input uh, like you have the resources raw materials and you process it and it will become a product or service right and along the process eh, of transforming the uh, input to output yeah, we have this vertical integration and horizontal integration. Let's look at the horizontal integration first, right? So you get um, the raw materials yeah, or resources from your suppliers. Then once the suppliers send to the production, you produce it, then you store in a warehouse or you, uh, you have a distributor, you send to another company and store it. And when there is order, you will transport it or logistic, right? And along those activities, along those process, what you are doing is you are sharing among your supply chain partners, companies in the supply chain, the product, okay, to finish the product. You are transferring money or finance and also information. So when there is a disruption in the supply chain, we're going to look at both horizontal and vertical supply chain issues, right? The product cannot be finished. There is no money. Uh, lack of information, we cannot send. If there is, uh, for example, what happened to uh, in case of war, yeah? So we, we cannot send to Europe our product, yeah? And no money for uh, during COVID, we cannot transfer. Even if we transfer, we cannot receive any product. Yeah, right. So there are some of the examples for manufacturing supply chain involve like from starting from supplier, then manufacturer, distributor, and logistic. For financial service, also we talk about supply chain. Yeah, from supplier, then uh, offer you several option. Uh, um, for example, uh, option A, B, and C, yeah, and then uh, you agree, you make a contract, and then you purchase. They will send you uh, the, uh, um, but they will perform the, the the service, yeah, and then they will charge you, giving you invoice, and then you make payment, right? So let's look at the journey of a uh, Big Mac, McDonald's, Burger, yeah. So the supplier is from UK and the cucumber alone is coming from Turkey. Yeah? So we have different, uh, different uh, suppliers yeah? from different uh, countries. Yeah? And then uh, we also, the, the ketchup, yeah? uh, tomatoes coming from Belgium. Yeah? And the mustard, uh, I think is from UK. Yeah, yeah. right. So it involves a lot of uh, national cross national um, uh, suppliers here. Yeah, we are talking about producing for the sub. Uh, I mean, supplying only. Yeah, we are not talking about producing. Yeah, we are talking about supplying only. And in UK here, if you look at the first one, there's only one factory in UK producing McDonald's, supplied by sixteen thousand farmers. 
So they even pay the farmer. Yeah? So they have a very long supply chain. Imagine if there is a disruption, what will happen? Yeah? We have to think about that. And why they need to have from different countries? Because if disruption happen, what will happen? Yeah? For example, in Thailand, yeah? during all, I, I, do, I don't know whether you know about this because it's way long ago. Yeah? In Thailand, yeah? uh, Thailand will not get uh, any flood uh, in the Bangkok, yeah? Bangkok area. They will never get flood. That's why Honda and Toyota opened their manufacturing there. But one day, not one day, lah, yeah, one month, a <laughs> long time ago, um, there's a flood happened in Bangkok, central region. They never think that will happen. And what happened? Toyota and Honda have to scrap their cars because it's unusable anymore. Yeah. So that is disruption, things that we never expect to happen. They open in Thailand because they are Japan prone to earthquake and there is not enough materials there. It's easier if they open in Thailand where they get the materials from Thailand, from Indonesia, Malaysia, and so on. So now Thailand, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Honda and uh, Toyota learn from the mistake. Now they are doing uh, they also open in Thailand. They also open in Indonesia, for example. They also open in Malaysia, for example. For example, yeah, right. So that is what disruption can do to our supply chain, right? So how disruption affects supply chain? We have talked about this. So let's focus only on COVID nineteen. Yeah, because of COVID nineteen, we see that McDonald's. Yeah, commodity inflation increase, shortages. We've seen uh, shipping rates increase. We've seen that low stock. We see that air cargo demand rise. So it's more expensive to uh, transport our product and port are full. Yeah? So delay. Uh, there are uh, at that time 79 yeah? ships waiting outside, queuing outside of US port, yeah? they cannot enter because not enough manpower to take all the cargo. Yeah? And so the customer need to wait longer. Yeah? Retailer also increase the price because not enough product. Yeah? And we, uh, if you are interested to know about the, uh, what we call uh, uh, COVID-19, yeah? uh, I have this timeline. Yeah? Uh, you can get this timeline later on. You can see what happened. Uh, what, what is the most important thing is during that COVID-19 here, March 21st, yeah, Swell Canal blockade. Yeah? Swell Canal holds 20% of world trade. Okay, You have COVID-19 and then you have Swell Canal block, yeah? somehow blocked by a large ship. So they have to make a decision. Companies need to make a decision. Do you want to wait until they clear that ship or you want to take a longer route through Africa? That will cost more expensive. Waiting also expensive yeah, because the, the, the product is not going to be at a, a customer's inventory or you take a longer route to transport will also be more expensive. So companies always need to have a backup plan, right? That's why this backup plan is to help company recover. That is what we call as resilient. Yeah? That's why we want company to be resilient. Yeah? What is resilient? Resilient is able to withstand or recover quickly from difficult conditions. Yeah, you, uh, we cannot say that uh, we want to have zero disaster. Not going to happen because our company is exposed to external factors also. Yeah, but what we want is actually learn from the mistake, learn from the problem, and be prepared when the disaster struck. We know how to. 
uh, recover from that. Yeah, and quickly. The the word here is recover quickly. So for supply chain resilient, why we are focusing on resilient recover quickly for the supply chain, not to the company. Nowadays, it's no longer company versus company or firm versus firm. It's supply chain versus supply chain. You might have uh, Samsung phones. You might have iPhone, right? And you compare which one is better. But you should know that Samsung is actually a supplier for iPhone. Yeah. So they are actually very close. They need each other. Only they compete with the end product. But in terms of the supply chain, they need each other. Right. So it's no longer company versus company or firm versus firm. It's supply chain versus supply chain. You can, uh, if today you are good, uh, your company is very good, it's because of the supply chain. If you only take care of your own uh, firm, then uh, another company uh, or firm in the supply chain can overtake your competitive advantage. Yeah. So the keyword here, we, we want to recover quickly, but in a supply chain, we want our partners also to enjoy recover quickly. Okay. So without resiliency, without able to recover quickly, firms will react to internal and external factors. On the disaster happen, we do something. Without that, we will not do anything. But if company has resiliency, then we are proactive and we know how to recover, all right? So let's take an example of Ferrari. I'm not sure whether you are a fan of uh, Formula One. Yeah? Uh, I used to follow Formula One because of Michael Schumacher yeah? and Ferrari. Yeah? Uh, but they are no longer a very good team. Yeah? I know. Uh, but this example will show you why I choose Ferrari. Yeah? Back in, uh, during uh, Mercedes, yeah? you, you see number 10, Hamilton. Yeah? During those times, Mercedes... Uh, was very dominant. Yeah, they are very good. They have very good car. Yeah? And Ferrari at that time not so good. Yeah, uh, they are fighting for the middle, uh, not fighting for the championship. Yeah. Uh, so at that time, uh, the Ferrari top management make a decision. So let's not focus on two thousand twenty. Let's us build a good car that can compete in twenty twenty two right this year and what happened this year we see improvement for ferrari although they are not consistent but we can see that they are better than mercedes at this moment yeah so that is resiliency if you think or you only um, um, try to think that uh, our brand is so powerful we have all the capabilities yeah we do not need to improve then we get into a trouble but we need to think that there always be a disaster there always be a disruption yeah in our business that's why we need to have a plan yeah the business continuity plan the disaster management plan for us to recover quickly right here is from the uh, uh 1000 articles yeah so I've looked up uh, 1,000 articles related to resiliency, right? So what are those scholars and yeah, those professors wrote about when they uh, study about resiliency? You see the trend there, similar to your answer previously about disruption, right? So resiliency and disruption, they are closely connected, right? So in resiliency, they study about supply chain. They study about food supply, animals. Yeah, uh, they study about energy. They study about pandemic or health related like COVID nineteen. They study about sustainability. Yeah, they also have technology like artificial intelligence and so on. Yeah, uh, they study about human how it will impact human being, and also environment like circular economy. Yeah. So you can see the trend here. We know that all of these, almost, almost all of these are external factors that can impact our firm. 
That's something that we cannot control, but we can actually reduce or we can take opportunity on. Yeah. So for resilient, because our objective is to recover quickly, we need to understand about the disaster here. Understand about the risk, about supply chain, animal, energy, uh, pandemic, uh, human, uh, environment, and technology so that we can prepare a plan, a strategy for us to improve our business, right? So this is another example. Uh, I think some of you know about these two brands here, eh? LA Lakers for the basketball, they are very famous, yeah? And Manchester United Football Club, yeah? Uh, I think even our ladies friend also uh, would know about these two, yeah? At least one of them, yeah? We, uh, Manchester or LA Lakers, yeah? So both of these brand are international, are very uh, reputable brands, yeah? But what happened? LA Lakers, after they, uh, after their late uh, Kobe Bryant uh, retired, they are no longer a force or no longer, uh, uh, I mean, a super team in the NBA, in basketball. Yeah? Manchester United, after Sir Alex Ferguson uh, retired, they've been trying to find someone who has the same capability and the same influence like Sir Alex to bring Manchester United back or similar or recover like during those uh, Sir Alex era. But you, you know and you can see in the news what happened to Lakers, what happened to United. They're still finding it out. So if we are too late, yeah, if we fail to look or we fail to have this plan, contingency plan, how we can be resilient, then we will become like Lakers, we will become like Manchester United. No offense to Manchester United or Lakers, yeah? Right, so how we can be resilient? We can be flexible like Dell. If you go to Dell website or Lenovo website, uh, when you want to order your new laptop, for example, yeah, you can actually um, uh, uh, custom made it. Yeah, uh, I don't want Intel. I want AMD processor, for example. I want higher RAM, not a lower. I want a, a higher graphic cards and so on. Now you think that, well, uh, that's not uh, troublesome yeah, for you, but for the company, imagine 400,000 customers every day doing the same thing. I want this, I don't want that. I don't want to follow your uh, normal product. I want to add in this and that. What will happen to the manufacturing? Yeah. So they need to adapt. Yeah. They need to offer flexibility because they want to sustain in the business. And re remember about the resiliency, it helps to sustain, yeah? So that's why they focus on flexibility. Uh, they, uh, we also, uh, companies also can be resilient in terms of responsiveness like Amazon. During COVID-19, when we have uh, a problem uh, for the logistic uh, providers to uh, uh, send the product to a customer, Amazon don't have that problem. Why? We see that uh, in US, there is a, a, a queue of ships try to enter ports, try to get the, the product to the ports so that the logistic provider, the vehicle can take to the customer. But Amazon don't have that problem because they have their own ships. They have their own ports. So when, when there is a, a disruption, they don't have it. Yeah, They don't have it. They spend to get their own uh, transportation, their own supply chain, similar to Apple. Apple, previously, uh, they are using Intel processor, right? Now they have their own processor. Why? Because they believe that Intel is not good enough to help them, yeah, to help them to get uh, uh, what they want. 
So they want to develop their own. It's expensive. But see what happened? Now, uh, uh, in, uh, Apple's processor is one of the best performance processor uh, in the world. Yeah, I'm not an Apple fan, but uh, I have to give credit. Yeah, uh, Environmental friendly, like IKEA. Yeah, IKEA always say that, hey, uh, uh, all of our product, we take care of the environment. So they think about the future. You see, when we uh, you analyze, yeah, you analyze, you don't think about uh, environment, right? But when we see from one thousand articles in the literature stating about resiliency, they talk about environment. So IKEA knows one day because of the this climate change, um, environment. Uh, environmental friendly product or process will become uh, uh, important or a requirement yeah, by customer, by government for company. So they start early. They want to tell that we are a company that take care of the environment. So they will become a champion on that. Yeah? Or technological ready like Samsung. Did you know that Samsung has tank? Tank, I mean, kereta kebal. Yeah? Because uh, they also are uh, a biggest company in Korea. Yeah, uh, they have uh, they they even fund for the army. Yeah, so they they would like to go to all of the technology sector. Yeah, uh, if you have like a curve uh, a screen. Yeah, they also want to do that. Even though they are not good, they want to do that. Uh, if um, someone else doing something related to technology, they also want to do that uh, for home appliance, for everything. They want to do that. Why? Because they want to be viewed as a technological ready company. Yeah. And this is important. You identify that technology is important, right? But at this moment in 2022, Articles in the literature stated that human stated about a pandemic are more important. You stated pandemic and technology are important. Yeah, so you are foreseeing the future, and your generation usually will go with technology. So you know already that uh, if Samsung and uh, IKEA, Amazon, and Dell get your answer, they know already they must keep on continue upgrading their technology. Now with IR 4.0, there is no more excuse, right? So we're going to skip this one because we don't have time. Yeah, so I want to show you uh, this one. Um, uh, you don't have to do this. I just want to show you, you can go to this uh, case study later. Yeah, It's about banking disrupted by Deloitte. Yeah. Uh, uh, consultation firm, yeah, uh, especially uh, the big four uh, for accounting, yeah, and we can uh, we will analyze this using some uh, guidelines, yeah, that have been provided, right? So this is the case. Uh, you can get this case is a short case. Uh, you can download the report and the infographic as well from this website, yeah, right. So when we get a case. For example, you are now, let's say you are working for a company. Yeah, your boss call you, say that, hey, I need your opinion. How can we improve? So first you need to understand the issues or problems. What is the issue or the problem faced by this firm? Yeah. And what actions has been taken by this firm? Once you know that, you also need to know who take that action, the protagonist, and what responsibilities of each person involved in regard to that action or challenges, Yeah, what responsibilities they have to do. And then once you know the problem or issue, you know what actions they already take, Yeah, who's responsible for whom, Yeah, then you can identify what is the strategy that that firm already take. Yeah? And which strategy should firm prioritize? Yeah. Okay. For example, I want to uh, digitalize. Yeah. 
I want to uh, focus on the environment. So you can't focus on everything because that's going to be expensive. So what we do is we're going to prioritize. Okay, for technology, that is very highly likely that we're going to do that first. Second, we're going to focus on the environment, for example. Yeah. So you put priority. Yeah. And then we strategize according to the priority. Yeah. So we know that now we're going to focus on digital. Uh, let's say the operations. Yeah. To make sure that everything uh, from paper now we only use digital. Yeah. Technology. Uh, everything system based. Yeah. So we focus on that. And we need to have the objective or plan for the next five years. Yeah, we cannot say that. Okay, I want to. Uh, I want everything. Uh, this technology from now. No, because we are dealing with human. We are dealing with limited resources. So we need to gradually, gradually think, gradually improve. Yeah. For example, today we are going to use Zoom, but later because of let's say just assume. Yeah. Because of the security, uh, our own uh, uh, university will have their own uh, platform for online learning rather than going through Zoom, uh, WebEx, or uh, uh, what else? Uh, Google Meet. Yeah. So we will have our own. So that will take some time. Yeah. We cannot just say that, okay, let's move to our own uh, system. If it's not ready, then there's a problem. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, more, uh, then after that, we need to monitor and continuously improve so that we can be resilient. Yeah, right. So this is the case. Yeah, this is the case where uh, the Deloitte already uh, put that in the website. You can go and look at it. Yeah, I already highlighted for you. Yeah, so for bank, Deloitte said that because of the financial crisis and re-regulation. We make it tougher. Eh? And then, tough choice. If bank want to stay competitive, wants to stay, uh, stay in the industry, in the digital age technology, yeah? they need to upgrade. Yeah? Now they are facing with cryptocurrency, yeah? uh, crypto bank, yeah? and the customer expectations have changed. Yeah? Now you expect everything uh, online, uh, mobile phone, yeah? And the uh, customer also expect banks to be responsive. Today you ask, tomorrow you get the answer, yeah? Uh, today uh, you want bank to improve, tomorrow you already want bank to already have the best security and so on, yeah? And we, can, uh, we see that uh, in the industry, banking industry or financial industry, oligopolistic, yeah, or few firms yeah, already weakened. Yeah? So now everyone can enter. Now you also can do your own cryptocurrency. You hold your own currency, right? So there is a new challenge for regulation and so on. And uh, now everyone or every company need to be technologically and enabled. Yeah? So how and what they can do about it. Yeah? So they need to expand in securities market. Uh, for the new entrance, let's say Shabir's Bank, yeah, need to have a new rules, yeah, need to reinvent the service. Now we have fintech, remember, uh, the fintech revolution, blockchain, and so on. So now we are expecting bank also to offer the same thing, and the tech titans can enter also, yeah, and we should have a roadmap for the future. This is like a business continuity plan, yeah. But Deloitte say that should not stop there because bank needs to have a radical transformation. What it means there is that bank should focus on developing distinctive capabilities yeah? and, and resist building excess fixed costs. And also you mentioned in your analysis, the big data, right? Analytics. So we can use, use analytics like I think uh, uh, previously, uh, last week, yeah, you already learned about uh, the imp importance and the impact of analytics, business analytics, yeah? machine learning, and so on. Yeah? So that is the future. That is what you see uh, uh, from the 1,000 articles that I've shown you. Yeah? All right. So let's recap. 
Yeah. Before we end, let's recap about resilience, how it also can Im impact us as human beings. Yeah. We need to practice to ourselves. Yeah. If uh, you need to think like this, yeah. Focus if our if our focus is on a firm, on firm itself, yeah. We don't care about anything else. Yeah. It's like we are focusing on ourselves, not our family. What happened if something happened to our family? Are we going to be affected? Of course. Yeah. If my son or daughter is sick, yeah, I cannot. Uh, all, all, of course, it will impact my work, yeah? impact my time uh, doing work and so on. Yeah? So we need to think that, stop thinking about ourselves, stop thinking that we need to improve firm or company only. Need to think how we can improve the whole supply chain because supply chain is our family. Okay? And we need to think that change happens all the time. Yeah? And disruption, it can be advantageous or disadvantageous. So we know that uh, it, will, uh, it will change over time. And uh, this change can be good or bad, benefits or um, not going to be beneficial. Yeah? Still, we need to adapt. Yeah? So if we know that internet is no good, negative, are we going to stop using that? Because we know that uh, more scam happen because we click a link yeah, provided to us. So are we going to stop, throw away our phones, throw away our laptop? No. We increase security. We increase awareness not to do that. right? So we need to adapt. And lastly, resilient means we have to continuously improve and plan for the future. You, you need to... Uh, even if you can't remember everything what I've said, just remember that you need to start analyzing the disaster or disruption. And then you need to come out with two plans. One is called disaster management plan. Second, business continuity plan. How are you going to do that? You can use the pastel, uh, SWOT, Porter, Five Forces, uh, Value Chain Analysis, and so on. Okay? We need to think how we can improve so that when disruption happen, we already have a plan. Have a plan, short-term, middle, uh, or long-term plan for us to recover. Remember that the resiliency is about recovering. It's not about we have a zero problem. No, recovering. Yeah? Like Sylvester, uh, Sylvester Stallone mentioned to his son, remember in his last movie, he said that... Uh, uh, it's, it is not about um, uh, his son tried to say to him that that you are too old. Don't go for boxing anymore. He said that it's not about that. It's, uh, life moves on because when someone punch you, punch you again and again until you down, you back up again. Life is about that. Yeah? You down, you back up again. Down, punch, by, uh, down again and back up again. Okay, resiliency is about that. And I hope that um, you can apply resiliency to your study, to yourself, and also when you're analyzing for company, think about supply chain, think about how you can improve the resiliency. All right, so that's all from me. So let's uh, go with uh, the Q&A. If you have any question, I saw one chat here. Oh, thanks, Mini. All right. So is there any questions? Okay. Okay, directly in the Zoom chat, Professor. Uh, if I may, from Nora oh, Mariska, if resilience, if resilience is how to survive this, the disruption, as it was also explained, the action is needed gradually because we have to deal with some aspects. Is there a possibility of an impact on the supply chain or the stability of the company itself if it is too fast in improving for shifting to win the competition? Yes, this oh, is a very, very good question. Yeah, I, I can see uh, the question. Um, um, moderator, thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, thank I will you. Uh, read it. Yeah? Okay, so this is a really good question. For example, we talk about sustainability. Yeah, You talk about sustainability. Uh, we actually talk about this climate change from Kyoto Protocol 1997. Until now, they are still debating whether that uh, developing countries should take blame uh, or the developed countries should 
take respons uh, responsibility. Yeah. So they are doing this until it's going to be too late because climate change is moving too fast. Yeah. And now companies, they cannot just think about sustainability. They need also to think about technology because IR 4.0. Now we already talked about IR 5.0. Yeah. Uh, so they are they are changing quickly. Yeah. Like you said that how uh, what actions need to uh, take. Yeah. How we can deal with this. When you want to deal with this, you cannot deal as your own. Yeah. You cannot change your world yourself. You need to change your family. Means that the supply chain. Once supply chain start, everything will start. For example, let's take Apple. I don't like Apple actually. Yeah, <laughs> okay, but Apple is a good example. Uh, Apple start to not giving you charger, not giving you earphone. Right? They don't give you earphone anymore. They don't give you charger anymore. And who makes fun of that? Samsung. What happened after that? Samsung also never give you earphone. They give you charger, I think. Yeah, I think they still, I'm not sure whether they, I think they still give you charger. Yeah. And Apple is the one who started to stop using USB-A. They all say that, no, we just use USB-C. And what happened? All customer and, uh, and uh, other competitors, they are not ready. Yeah. Some follow Apple, but because customer said that, no, I need to buy a new thing and so on. So Apple know that they need to gradually improve, gradually introduce new thing rather than radically. Yeah. So now uh, for the new Apple product, they, uh, they have, uh, uh, they have new, uh, they have, they introduced back USB A, right? So that shows that if you want to improve first, you need to focus on supply chain. Second, although that the world is moving too fast, we need to take gradual actions. For, uh, for ourselves, for, for me, myself, we need to improve our habit. We need to improve our practice. Then slowly, we will be able to solve those sustainability and technological issues. Yeah? So the second question is, how do we survive if we don't know until when something ends, like you said about resilient uh, and how can be resilient? Yes, we don't know. And actually to have a plan, like for example, you have your own disaster management plan, you have your own uh, business continuity plan, you need to always update it. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, all time before, before your, your time, yeah, yeah, uh, that means I'm very old. Huh? Uh, during my time, uh, our focus is only about sustainability. That's all. Then, now during your time, I cannot say to you, hey guys, you all need to focus on sustainability alone. No, your challenge now in today's world, you have cyber threats, scam, you have uh, environmental, terrorism, war. You have all those issues now. So you need to always up update your business continuity plan and it will never end. Yeah? But because we always assess, we always analyze, we always talk together. Yeah? So you can actually uh, have a short-term, uh, middle and long-term plans that if a disaster similar to that happen, we know how to answer. Uh, final uh, example, you can look up Spanish flu. Actually, US, they actually are ready yeah, for COVID-19 that time. They, they're already ready. But because Donald Trump don't like to follow what the previous uh, uh, government, uh, Barack Obama's government did, they, they throw away the guidelines what uh, US government has a business or disaster uh, plan for pandemic. Yeah, they, uh, during uh, Barack Obama's time, they already have this pandemic guidebook. What will happen? Because they learn from Spanish flu all time before. So when next pandemic happen, this is what you're going to do. But what happened? US said that no, we're going to do our own. So we need to always improve, not start uh, radically. All right, so that's my answer. Is there any question?
Okay. Anything else uh, from the students about the questions or the discussion? Discussion. Okay. Uh, probably, probably it's going to be the end of the session also, uh, Professor. All right. Okay. Uh, can we have uh, the last session for photo, everyone? Could you help me, please, uh, Mrs. Zahim? Okay, uh, after this, uh, I will hand over again to Chika as well. Uh, but before that, uh, maybe some of you or most, um, Buzarin as well will explain uh, for the details about your assignments. Okay, so everyone is ready? Okay, the first slide would be three, two, one. Okay, the next slide, three, two, one. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Professor Indian. Yes, thank you so much, everyone. Thank, thank you, you so much, Professor. For the, uh, participation and uh, all the best to you. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Okay. Okay, before we move on to the next session, or maybe you can enjoy your weekend. So please, I uh, get back, get get it back again to Chika. Thank you, Chika. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Tantawi, for leading the previous two lecture class wonderfully. And also, we would like to express our biggest thank you to Associate Professor Dr. Siti Hasan Hassan, Dr. Indriana Wati Usman, and Dr. Muhammad Shabir bin Shahardin for the comprehensive material that you guys have shared with us. Okay, everyone, how was your lecture classes for today? Well, maybe it was pretty exhausting for you after having a four lecture class in a row, but I'm pretty sure you guys have learned a lot through the lecture class given today. And hopefully all the materials and explanations shared with you will be beneficial in your daily life. Okay, just like our previous meeting last week, before the Zoom ended, there will be explanation about your new task. Well, I'm pretty sure you guys are exact, excited for your new task, right? Okay, without further ado, the explanation regarding your new task will be explained by Mrs. Darwin. For Mrs. Darwin, I give you the time and screen. All right, thank you, um, Chika. All right, so hello guys, uh, we're finally at the end of today's session. Uh, but before we finish up the session, uh, uh, let me just um, explain to you a little bit about the final project and also the assignment that you will need to work on. Maybe uh, my colleague here, Badida could share the screen. Oh, wait, 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 we couldn't see the screen yet. It's like give a second All right, so um, we have this is uh, this template for your final project, uh, and as you guys know, for the final project is uh, uh, we we will require you to uh, work in a group to analyze the case that we have shared to you through the Google Classroom about Comida, in which we would like to implement the digital um, digital strategy for uh, Comida, which is the uh, the second largest microfinance company in Indonesia. And then uh, this is just the, the basically the, the, the first page, which is the cover page itself of the template of your final project. And then next up, uh, next page, please, next slide. Yes, all right. So then for this one, uh, we'll have three parts that you need to cover. The first one, of course, the introduction. And then next up is the discussion and analysis and last but not least is the conclusion and recommendation for the introduction you basically just need to um, do, just to uh, give a brief overview about the case and also um, your team's point of view about the main problem of the case itself just uh, you know just a brief explanation and overview of everything and then after that 
uh, moving on to the second part, which is the discussion and analysis. Uh, for the discussion and analysis, wait, 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 uh, the stream has not been moving yet. Oh, yeah. All right, here it is. So for the analysis and discussion, uh, we'll cover uh, four perspectives. Because uh, as you guys know, um, throughout this program, you will learn about um, the implementation of digitalization in the four perspectives of management, which is marketing operation that you have just learned today. And also uh, you're gonna learn about um, the perspective of finance and also human resource on next week. So uh, basically you're gonna need to cover uh, the analysis for each of the perspective uh, with these three, um, three main questions. So you need to answer these three main questions. The first one is the what aspects, and uh, the second one is the why aspects, and last but not least is the how aspects. So for example, here for the marketing perspective, you'll need to answer uh, the what question, such as what are the major issues of marketing management in Comida that needs to be addressed by digitalization? And here uh, you may note that we have given you the keyword or the hint for you to be able to work on it, um, uh, you know, uh, to work on it. Uh, easier. So we have given you the hint for that, which is uh, the competitive pressure. So in other words, uh, the major issues for the marketing management that uh, uh, the marketing management of Comida that probably needs to be addressed by digitalization is uh, the competitive pressure. But of course, uh, to answer this first one, uh, the first part of it, the what aspect, you may want to, you know, you, you may need to explain a little bit about uh, this and just and and not just uh, write down competitive pressure. That's it. Not not like that. You uh, definitely need to explain a little bit about what does that mean of this competitive pressure in the context and in the sense of this um, uh, marketing management issues in Comida. So that's the first one. And then for the second one, uh, you'll need to answer uh, the question of why, which is why those issues, uh, especially in this part, is the competitive pressure of Comida's marketing management needs to be addressed by digitalization. So you need to answer why uh, does this issue needs to be addressed by digitalization and you need to explain, uh, explain it clearly. That's for the second part. And last but not least is how questions. For the how questions here, uh, you'll need to explain of how can Comida manage to implement its digital marketing management strategy to face those issues. In this sense is to face this competitive pressure uh in 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 a way that it can be successful and also continue to improve in the future and you also need to identify the milestone uh of the strategy itself for uh for as as long as five years so let's say for the first year you'll uh you will uh you will propose or recommend uh Kamida to do this 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 and then for the second year you recommend Kamida to do this 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 and this that's basically how you will uh work on uh your final project to answer these three um these three main questions just three what why how so just uh two w plus one uh one h just this not that that not that much and uh, this is basically your final project, and this is going to be the same for the whole thing for uh, for the other perspective. Um, second, for the other perspective, yes. Uh, moving on to the next perspective, probably. Jinda, uh, yes. So this is for the operations, and then next up for the for the finance, uh, finance, finance. Yes, here it is, and last but not least, of course, uh, the human resource. So that's basically how you will uh, work on your final project. And then after this, um, you will have the last part, which is the conclusion and recommendation. So you, this is just a brief summary of everything and your conclusion of the case itself and your um, you know, summary of recommendations, uh, your recommendations for Comida and its digitalization in the future. So that's basically it of uh, the whole thing that you need to cover in the final project. And for this final project, you need to submit at the latest by uh, 24th of September, which is one day before the, uh, before the final project presentation, which is on 25th of September. Uh, but then uh, the you know the correlation or the relevancy between this final project and the assignment that you will need to work on for each um, for each perspective is just uh, you know is 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 
it's really high because you know for the assignment for each uh, for each perspective for example for uh, today you have learned about marketing and operations right so the assignment that you need to work on for uh, for marketing and So to help you in working on the analysis and discussions part of this final project. So maybe you could share the screen again, uh, Dinda. Uh, share the screen again and show them again the analysis and discussion part. Give a second. All right, so for example, here for the marketing perspective, you will need to make a mind map uh, to answer these three basic questions. Oh, wait, sorry, not this one, not the conclusions and recommendations. Um, yeah, this one. So you'll need to make a mind map, um, map of answering the questions of what, why, and how, and how you basically will, uh, will work on this mind map it's uh, basically totally up to you but we expect to have some along with the figures because it because it is a mind map right so some 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 charts or figures uh to help you uh to basically you know to answer these three questions so um having said that we actually don't want you to have any, uh, too much of the workload so this assignment please Rest assured that this assignment, this assignment is actually still the part of the final project that you need to work on uh, with your teammates, and this is actually just to help you to, you know, uh, to to uh, to work with the final project easier at uh, at the end of the uh, of the sessions. Because uh, you know, if you already have the mind map to answer these three questions of what, why, and how of each perspective, then it will be easier for you to, uh, you know, to work on. Um, this uh, this idea and elaborate your idea of answering to answer these uh, these three questions for each of the perspective. So please rest assured that um, basically the assignment as the and the final project is still uh, related, is still linked, and it's not going to be too much workload for you because it's basically the same thing. But you know we just would like to uh, basically to monitor your progress throughout the. Uh, throughout your work for the final project. So we would like and require you to uh, submit the assignment, which is the mind map uh, to answer this second part of the of the final project, which is the analysis and discussion for each part. And you will need to submit this uh, on the Google Classroom. So how you will uh, submit this, uh, let me just um, explain to you a little bit. Maybe uh, you could stop the share screen, uh, Dinda, thank you. All right, let me just show you a little bit how this works for the final project. Um, give me a second. So yes, this is it. So this is um, the view on, on, on the students, on, on, the, on the students view. So as you guys can see, this is the stream. And you just go to the classwork. For the classwork, we have classified uh, each menu for you to make it easier for you to find what you need. Uh, this is for the presentation slides and this is for the discussion forum and this is for the uh, assignment submission and the final project. For the final project, uh, you'll see that there are two uh, main parts. The first one is the case and we will also upload um, the, the template that we have shared to you we, uh, that I have explained to you before in here so you can find the template here later in this part yes and then after that you could also uh wait you could also submit your uh presentation in here this one so that's basically it uh second so that's for the final project you could submit your presentation here for the final project present submission uh but then this this is going to be due on september 24th and before that, you will need to submit um, the assignment, which is the mind map for each of the perspective. For example, for the marketing and operations, uh, both of them are going to do next week on September 17th. 
And for example, here, the after you work on your assignment for the mind map of the marketing perspective to answer the what, why, and how questions, the mind map of that, you would just go with this, view the assignment, and then, yes, here it is. Yes, you can just add the file here. Add your file, for example, here, the file just just uh you can just browse the file on your computer and upload it here so that's basically it uh how you could submit the uh, the assignment for each of the session for each of the perspective that's for the um marketing and that this one is for operations finance and human resource so that's basically it and you also could have the discussion forum uh give me a second give me a second a little bit All right, so then uh, you also will see that uh, we have explained to you a little bit that we have this discussion forum part. So you could discuss with your teammate uh, in your uh, in this discussion forum. For example, here I uh, was assigned to I was assigned to group three. Then I could only access the discussion forum uh, for group three. Then I could just uh, put it here, and then yes, I could just add the class comment here to discuss, for example, uh, what's up here, for example, like this, then we just a test, yeah. So then I could just submit, uh, post my comment here and then the other teammates could also add the comment here. And then that's basically how we are gonna monitor your um, your discussions uh, for uh, for the asynchronous sessions that we have talked about in the last uh, in the last week. So that's basically it. And if you belong to group one, group two, or or other groups, you'll only be able to see uh, your group here on the discussion forum. So please rest assured that uh, your discussion with your teammates will not be able to be seen by the other uh, be, by the other people on the uh, on the other groups. So we maintain your privacy and security, uh, your privacy, your privacy of your group discussions here. So uh, don't worry about that. So that's basically it that I would like to share about the final project and also the assignment uh, itself, uh, the mind map for each perspective. Does anyone have any questions up to this point? No questions? All right. If you still have any questions later on, when you work at the assignment and also the final project, you could definitely ask us as the team uh, by the uh, through the group that we have, the WhatsApp group, or just uh, through the private chat. So that's this that I would like to share to you, and I will give it back to uh, Chica, our MC for today. Okay, thank you so much, Mrs. Armin, for the very good explanation regarding the final project. Okay, everyone, since we are about to reach our end of the second day of this STEM program, to remind all of the participants, please do not forget to fill in the attendance form. And to remind all of you once again, you need to join this program with minimum attendance 75%, which means your maximums of absence, absence is only one day. Okay, everyone, it saddens me again to say this, but we are here at the end of the day of the second day of Wisdom program. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending the second day of the Wisdom wonderfully. And I saw you guys have improved a lot today. So I will give you like my appreciation and also open up to all of you for today. And I hope that for the next meeting, you guys will come back with the full energy and also with full enthusiasm for our next lecture class. Okay, thank you so much everyone for attending today event and we wish you all the best for the next meeting that is about to come and see you again next week and have a great weekend everyone. Bye. Good luck.